Hello, this is a documentary about the ram's horn snails. Obviously, as you can see, the snail tank is covered in blanket weed. So blanket weed is algae that grows on the surface of the pond or water source as you can see. And gives the effect of a pea soup. So it blocks off the sunlight. It can be caused by an abundance of nutrients getting into the uh, water. So for this documentary to occur, we have to clear the surface. Way to do that would be a net or just by hand. It's cold. So you can see it's green quite densely packed. I must be putting in this bucket. Now in here is a chance we'll see some young snails. Don't worry about them. We'll talk about them more later on. So blanket weeds are usually single floating things. You can kind of see you can kind of see the root with the little water drop. They're very small, which makes for moving them all very hard. And the well, trouble with this and like all algae is it grows back very fast. So it reproduces about double in them, not like bacteria, doubles in number every like a week or so. So we won't be able to get it all out because it's so small, but we can make it clear enough for us to see. So, welcome to part one of the snail documentary. This will be all about food. So food's obviously very important, and for snails as well as you. So I feed my snails cucumber and lettuce, and basically all the plant life and the algae you've seen earlier on. So we only eat the most delicate plants, preferring algae, Uneaten fish food and dead fish and species will enjoy different leaves with different plants but most leave living plants alone so you've, there's no need to leave, worry about having plants with snails because the snails usually leave them alone. One snail finds food as you can see this here. All the other snails will migrate towards that one area and decimate that piece of cucumber. So it helps to soften the food by running it underwater first because they don't have the sharpest teeth. So you don't need to overfeed them. I feed them once every week, like around that time, and they're healthy, so that's fine. If they overfeed, they'll breed a lot quicker. So the old mathematical equation, less food equals more competition equals fewer snails. So, like all food, it contains nutrients, especially calcium, which is used for the shell, but we'll get to that later. So the nutrients help the snails to grow. I mean, they don't grow very, very big, but that's a relief. So if you leave uneaten food for too long, it can cause nutrient spikes, which can cause algae. So if you see a piece of food after a couple of days, it means you've probably overfed them. So it's best just to take it out, put it back in uh, three, four days later. Um, a more theory note, they're also cannibalistic, so they will eat their dead relatives which is useful for clearing out the tank so you'd have to fish out yourself and it will stop the smell and as it eats dead animals it can make it a bit more hygienic and returns nutrients to the pond which the plants can use so yeah that's food they eat a lot and just like humans they need it for to get nutrients like calcium to grow and to reproduce so we're not fussy eaters just anything green is best again i use cucumber lettuce it's very thin very thin slices uh, soften it up put it in the water and it'll be gone within the day because they'll all just move and you'll have 10 20 snails just munching away so they're not fussy and they will eat dead animals decaying matter so they are very useful for cleaning the pond or wherever you're storing them, but we'll get to that more later. So, welcome to part two, the habitat. And here I keep them in just a plastic tank full of rainwater. They're also in the pond. 
it's just rainwater as well. So obviously they will live longer in captivity, there's no predators. So, um, but they use the same supply so you don't train it up too rapidly because they won't be able to adapt too quickly. So just continuously use rainwater or tap water. And high temperature, just room temperature outside, just in the sun, doesn't, they're not fussy. Uh, lighting is just normal. Sunlight works. I mean, they've had some artificial light and they're fine. And then there's some chemicals you should avoid. They're just ammonia and nitrate levels. Keep them at zero parts per million. And you can use probes, which will tell you, but it's easy just to go only feed them when they need feeding and remove any dead food because they contain nitrates. They're like rocky places and the live plants because they shred dead leaves which they can eat and they also lay their eggs on the rocks and on the plants and also it gives them a place to hide however they have to show for that as well they also attach to the rocks and to the surface of well, hard surfaces to find food uh, we can survive many water conditions just make sure it's aerated and oxygenated so just put in some plants and maybe a pond filter of a pump might help but it's not important and then use slow moving or still water so don't put them in a stream or a waterfall just a pond and avoid any sudden changes so always use either pond or rain or tap water uh, and if you're buying them make the journey back smooth so don't stress them out just um, yeah, so I don't pick them up very often, not at all, if it can be helped. So they, one more time, uh, they breathe in both atmospheric air, because they've got a special pulmonary cavity, and they also breathe in oxygen dissolved in the water. So a lot like frogs, or amphibians, so they can breathe outside and within water. So, so if you see them on the outside of your tank, don't worry, cause they can still breathe and they will be outside for a long amount of time. So if they're active, so moving, and attached to a surface, it means they're a healthy snail. And a healthy snail is a happy snail. So as the water evaporates, it needs to be replaced. So as you can see from, uh, you can't see, but there's a rock here, uh, where I'm pointing in the water and on this side here you can see this line so that's really the highest point the water should be and when it reaches the rock level it means I need to add up so here's the rainwater and this isn't going to work So, as you can see, there's a bunch of sediment that's muffled in the water and that will float to the bottom and settle there and add nutrients to the water for the plants and for the snails to eat. And the snails are unharmed. You see they're eating that cucumber very nicely. And basically, this is what you need to do. Just keep the level up. Keep the snails in the water and they'll be happy. No one's moving. Uh, let's stop now. Now, there's one other thing I need to try and show you. It's the snail's mouth. So it has a little hole or, or open and close when it eats its food. Now, I doubt I'm going to be able to pick this up on camera, but it is definitely worth seeing. So, so, part three, the reading. Ramshorn snails are hermaphroditic, which means the two organisms of any gender have the ability to breed and produce os offspring. They can also fertilise their own eggs, meaning that if you have one snail, you can end up with ten after it's reproduced. 
may lay eggs in good of fields, which contain around 12 eggs. Each egg contains 20 to 30 snails, which results in one globule carrying up to 360 snails. Now, they're not all going to survive, but it means they multiply fast, and works well, you can get a lot of snails very quickly, which is great for the birds. So, because they multiply so fast, they can be considered a nuisance by some, but, I mean, nearly dead leaves, so they're not really that annoying. So the eggs can float on the surface, but are normally attached to hard surfaces like plants, rocks. After two to five weeks, they will hatch, releasing all their baby snails, which are very small. And the globules have, or the eggs have a jelly-like substance uh, covering them to protect them from harm, as you can see from these photographs. So the globules are translucent, so you can kind of see very small snails developing inside them, which is quite cool. And the newborn snails are really small, so you can't see them. Or it's very hard to see them. Uh, and because they're small, they can be attached to a plant and move somewhere else. I and mean, then you could accidentally start another snail population. But they breed fast. And if you want to control it, you just have to take out the big uh, snails that are capable of it. So, part four the fells. So this is a regular garden snail, not ramson snail. Found this in my pond, so I assume it fell in, drowned, and must have been eaten. So you can easily tell the difference between this shell and a ramson snail shell. It looks like this, fully grown. And this is a healthier, oops, this is a healthier shell, but this is a more medium sized snail. So, you can easily tell the difference, and I'll just get them all out on display. This is a little one, it's going to get harder to see. And, little one, well, lighter coloured. A little one, baby one, another baby one, uh, even younger baby one, tiny, I've lost that, I don't know where that's gone, yeah, that's, that's gone, okay for next time, and of a tiny little one and I don't know where the other one went I'll probably stand on it later so there you can see uh, oh here it went it was in the medium sized ones so we got garden snail ramson snail medium sized ramson snail young ramson snail baby and uh, even smaller so you can see why it's hard to see them when they're transferred pond to pond so most of them are extremely small as you can tell but they can reach a size of two and a half centimeters the fells range in color from translucent which is the really small ones which I won't be able to show you to various shades of brown to dark nearly black which is this one so, so the snails have no operculum and have one pair of tentacles with the eye spots at the base of the tentacles like your normal garden snail. So when you're buying these, make sure you can see both tentacles, otherwise it's not healthy and probably die soon. So most of the young snails have translucent fells and as they develop more and eat more, they become darker and the healthy shell looks flat and coiled up like a ramson, hence the name ramson snails. So this shell here, this snail, oh, it looks better on this side. But because it's white, flaky white, it means it hasn't had enough calcium. So the solution is that to give it some cucumber. Whereas this snail would have had lots of uh, calcium because it's, well, 
darker, more firm, it's not crumbly. Uh, so that's the films. Obviously they're there for protection. Now, thing, these Ramshorn snails, which other aquatic snails do have, most snails, aquatic snails, have a covering here, so they can tuck up into the frill and be safe. Whereas these snails have no covering, so when they hide, coil up, they can still be or taken out. So there are our frills. So, part five, their purpose. Ever wondered what they're doing here on Earth? Living their life? Short lifespan? Why are they here? Well, they can be very good tank cleaners, so they eat debris and algae and dead leaves that sink to the bottom. So this cleans your pond, cleans your tank, and helps maintain its well, hygienic conditions. So dead animals and decaying leaves can be a problem as they make the water uh, affect the pH and add nutrients which can cause algal blooms. So the snails eat all of these things, keeping the well, water source uh, well, clean. Uh, so they also act as sanitation as well eat dead animals, dead leaves. So so they act as a sanitation device as they eat dead matter and also can tell you if your uh, water is not clean. If they're at the surface suggest that it's not clean, I could probably do with a change. Although if it's an outdoor pond that might be difficult, but you, know, you can adapt to the situation at hand. So that's their purpose for humans, but those long-lasting philosophical discussions still go on in the snail school. So, part six, other. So many fish eat the snails, so it's not useful if you're going to try and clean a fifth pond with them. But if you have so many, they'll probably survive, or well, depends on the fish. So. They also carry parasitic flukes, which can be transmitted to fish or humans, but it will depend on the species. So as long as you don't eat them and wash your hands after handling them and the water they're in, it'll be fine. And these flukes require in intermediate hosts, so if you just quarantine them, everything will be fine. And if you do want to remove them, the best way to do it is to get a piece of cucumber, a piece of lettuce, put it in, leave it for about one to two hours and take the food out and all the snails will be attached to it you can then well do what you like to feed them to the birds um, and they live for about a year so that's hopefully everything you need to know about these snails they live for about a year but in that time they'll make a lot of replacements they'll clean up your tank and pond but so hopefully that's been useful I'll see you soon